Peyton Place. Starring Dorothy Malone as Constance McKenzie. Warner Anderson as Matthew Swain. Ed Nelson as Michael Rossi. And Mia Farrow as Allison McKenzie. Since she was a child, Betty Anderson dreamed of living here in the Harrington house. And now she is living here as Rodney Harrington's wife. And the childhood dream is becoming a nightmare. Would you bring the sugar, Christy? Yes, sir. Thank you, Christine. Good morning, Betty. Good morning, Mr. Harrington. Good morning. What can I bring you, Miss? Mrs. Harrington, Christine. Yes, sir. What can I bring you, Mrs. Harrington? Oh, that's all right. I'll get it. Oh, sit down, Betty. Christine will bring you what you want. Just coffee and juice, please. Well, <laughs> that's not much of a breakfast. I, I'm not very hungry. Mrs. Harrington seems to be feeling a little better this morning. That's good. Thank you. That'll be all, Christine. Yes, sir. Sugar and cream? No, thank you. You have a lovely day for doing things. Thank you. I mean, uh, yes, it is. It'll take time, Betty. We live rather formally. Mrs. Harrington likes it that way, but you'll get used to it. I hope so. I want to, Mr. Harrington. I know. I don't want to change his life, Mr. Harrington. I never wanted to. Marriage, a baby, those are changes, big ones. You still think I should have taken your advice, don't you? That's in the past, Betty. You didn't take it. That's the fact of the matter, and we're both going to live with it. Now, I've got to get down to the mill, if you'll excuse me. Oh, uh, by the way, all the Harrington mothers had hearty appetites. Did they? I don't think Dr. Rossi would approve of that menu. I, uh, I'll see what I can do. That's a good girl. I'll get it, Christine. Good morning, Bob. I was on my way to the hospital. I thought I'd look in on Catherine again. That's very kind of you. How is she, Leslie? She seemed to have had a pretty good night. I'll go on up. Well, uh, Bob, I wonder if you shouldn't take her down to Boston, put her through the clinic. You know, with her father being there. Oh, well, perhaps. We'll see what happens. All right, you know best. Thanks for dropping by. Of course, Leslie. Who is it? Good morning, Miss Katie. Good morning, Dr. Rob. Come in, come in. Well, you don't look like a sick girl. Not at all. I'm bored with aches and pains. Well, that's the first sign you're getting well. Pulse is much better. Now, I suppose you're going to put that awful contraption on my arm. <laughs> well, if it bothers you, we let it pass this morning. Oh, yes. I like it when you humor me. Coffee, Robert? Thanks. I'll get it. Leslie hasn't touched his cup. You'd think by now Christine would stop putting it on my tray. What's all that? A guest list for the reception. Couldn't the reception wait until you were feeling better? It isn't exactly a reception, Robert. It's a, a statement. Katie, dear, our kind of people, we don't have to make statements. And the whole town knows why Rodney eloped. I have a new prescription for you. Robert, I wonder if she did go to Dr. Rossi, if she ever had reason to. Katie. Would you put it past the girl if it meant a chance to marry my son, to move into this house? You could find out. 
Betty's Dr. Rossi's patient. You're chief of staff of the hospital. And you're my friend. You've always been my friend. You brought Rodney into this world. Oh, Katie, dear, even if what you imagined is, is true, it's a bit late to do anything. No, it isn't. Not when the future of my son is at stake. I have a right to know, Robert. Well, as you say, we've been friends for a long time. Then you'll think about what I've said. Yes, I'll think about it. But it seems very unlikely. Now, uh, I want you to take one of these I and... know, I know. One at every meal and one at bedtime. <laughs> you know me too well, Katie. <laughs> it's the doctor supposed to know the patient. Then you'll find out about that girl, Robert. I know you will. Put all of Julie's things in a box for you. Oh, thank you, Mary. How long is he going to be on the phone? He's finished now. Yes? George Anderson would like to see you. Set him in. Thank you. Uh, could I leave this here to pick it up, Mary? Sure. Thank you. Hello, Les. How are you? Nice to see you. I just got last month's sales charge. You made a good showing, George. Yeah, thank you. Well, you did. I see you stole Marion from the production department. Yes, uh, Julie left so quickly, I haven't had time to find a replacement. Julie's better off at home. I know she is. Sit down, George. Ah, uh, thank you. I, uh, Les, about the other day, I lost my head. <laughs> that was then. This is now. I want to show you some swatches for the spring line. Now, Les, I am not going to change my plans. I am going back into the insurance game. Well, I wish you'd reconsider, George. I've been thinking about it for quite a while. I went down to renew my license a couple of days ago. No calls, please, Marion. I'm buying out Amos Barkley. I'm going to take his office down to the old Chamber of Commerce building. Sit down, George. Uh, no, thanks, Les. I feel much too good to sit down. George, you tried insurance before. Yeah, I made mistakes. I started small, I plodded along. Can I offer you some advice as a businessman? You can offer it. You're going to spread yourself too thin. Pay Mr. Barkley, rent, overhead. I can handle it. Julie will be my secretary. You just said she's better off at home. I know what's best for Julie, believe me. Now, don't worry about me, Les. I've got a little money saved up. All I'm saying, George, is don't try to start too big. You started big. Oh, you know better than that. The mill belongs to Catherine's family. I just made it pay. <laughs> you make everything pay. Yeah, whoever wrote that high school annual must have been some kind of an oracle. Leslie Harrington, most likely to succeed. George Anderson, most popular. I also tied for something called uh, Best Sense of Honor. Now I don't even remember who the other guy was. Me. <laughs> sure. <laughs> sure. I guess we haven't tied for much of anything since then, have we, Les? After high school, I put on a uniform and you bought yourself a wardrobe of pinstripes. I had a bad shoulder, George. Oh, that's all right, Les. But I'll tell you something. That was the last time I really liked you. All the way, I mean. Now, I guess you just found yourself a better tailor. That's what happened, isn't it? Les, maybe I shouldn't be so honest with you, because I, I want to ask you something. When I open the agency, will you give me the mill account? I've got a three-year contract with Merit Man. Come on, you can cancel that. I'll do something better than that, George. You open the agency and stay with me, too. I'll trim the fat off your territory. You just service the big accounts. Wouldn't work, Les. Why not? Just for a little while, until the agency gets on solid ground. That's very generous of you. Generous? I can't afford to lose you. You got other salesmen. Not like you. Not named George Anderson, isn't that what you mean? George. You still want to hold me down. Look at this. You look at it. After all that's happened, Betty, Julie, you still can't let go. Let go, Les. Let go.
playing hooky? Not exactly. Mother's on a very important mission. Top secret? Mm, she's buying her new winter coat. Without consulting you? I think she can manage. Well, I think you could help. Who knows, maybe you might... I don't need one. I'd like to see you in something bright this winter. I've never worn bright colors. Well, maybe you should. Yeah. Maybe I should. Something that will say from far off, Allison McKenzie is coming. Now, that's something that I would like to hear. Oh, Uncle Matt. Uh -oh. You said it again. Uncle Matt, would you mind the store for me, please? I thought you needed my expert opinion. I know. Who's minding the store? Uncle Matt's minding the store. I see. You both thought I needed your expert opinion, huh? Oh, Mother, this will never do. You're robbing some poor elderly lady who needs that coat to keep warm and inconspicuous. It happens to be what they're wearing this season. I want you to look like next season. No, sorry. You're sweet, but... No, just a little less tailored. Ah, now this is Constance McKenzie. Mother, has Dr. Rossi ever been married? Alice. The girls at school were wondering. I like this one. Is that a blush on yonder cheek? <laughs> You're very fanciful today. I feel like Juliet's nurse. Juliet was 14. I'm trying to break the budget. We can economize on something more trivial, like food. Do you like it? Very much. Then quick, before it melts. A lovely coat, Constance. I hate to strike a blow for reality, but i better think about it. Right. Oh, Mother, stop thinking. Hi. Hi, Dr. Hi, Rossi. Shopping spree? Just shopping, no spree. My daughter's an impulse buyer. Oh, good for you, Allison. You better convince Mother of that. And you better get back to school. All right. Goodbye. Goodbye. About last night, I owe you a thank you. What for? Oh, for being so understanding. Oh, I'm really not sure I understood. What do you mean? At the cottage. Were you uneasy there because a woman was murdered or because of me? A little of each. Well, the next time... There is going to be a next time, isn't there? There will be. Good night. He's just like a yo-yo. He bounces from one girl to the next day. I you wouldn't mind him bouncing to me. I hope Bonnie likes it. Bye-bye. Oh, dear. Oh, I'm sorry. Mrs. It's all right, Allison. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. Well, that was an exuberant entrance. You almost knocked her down. Aren't you curious? I know. You bought a new dress. And you spent all your allowance. Every penny. But it was worth it. I even had to go into my savings. I imagine it was worth it. But there are times when a girl needs something new. She certainly does. Should I try it on for you? Here in the store? I'm a very good quick change artist. Close your eyes and count to ten. This model is one of our most exclusive designs. We call it our Constance McKenzie coat. The blue of the fabric is of a most delicate shade, and it is sure to be a pace setter for the fall season. <laughs> oh, Mother, you should see your face. My daughter, the impulse buyer. Well, one of us had to strike a blow for freedom. Um, would Madam like to try it on? Here it goes. 
I can't explain it, but... Oh, it's really quite extravagant. It was selfish. I felt it was about time something exciting happened to us. Don't you feel different? You look different. Oh, younger, perhaps. No, not, not just younger. Maybe the way you used to look before you had me. Sort of, I don't know, dreamy-eyed. Oh, not that young. Does it seem such a long time ago? Well, the years have a way of slipping by. It's only the days that drag when you're grown up. That'll never happen to you. I'll never let it happen. I'm sorry, I, I didn't mean that. Oh, I hoped you did. Mother, let's, let's do something special tonight. So you can wear your new coat. Maybe we could go to the inn for dinner and afterwards... Oh. No, nope. you are definitely not Alison McKenzie's coat. Maybe it's her hair. Her stupid Alice in Wonderland hair. Well, you're locking up early. And we are going out. I have a, an apartment at the hairdresser's. Oh. And afterwards? I, uh, I have a date. I wish I'd known. But, you know, I could break it and we'll go out, just the two of us. No, no, don't be silly. You've got a date and a brand new coat, and I think Dr. Ross is very attractive, don't you? Yes, I do. Then that's all that matters, isn't it? You sure? Absolutely. You know how Grace looks forward to Thursdays. Well, you know how I look forward to Grace's cooking. What brings you here? Our new doctor. Thought I'd drop in on him. Just like that? More or less. Matt, what's your candid opinion of our new doctor? Well, don't you think he's been here long enough we can stop calling him our new doctor? <laughs> that's not an answer, Matt. That's an observation. Why do you think he left New York? And that's not a question. That's an insinuation. Well, I don't see why we should argue about him. See you next week. Good afternoon, ladies. That's quite a coat. My extravagant daughter bankrupt herself. Well, it's worth it. Now, here I came by to take you out for a cup of coffee, but that's a, a special occasion coat. Huh. She has a very special occasion date with Dr. Rossi. He asked me to dinner. And you accepted, of course. He's a very attractive man. Isn't it romantic? We'll do some shopping for you tomorrow, Allison. I don't need anything. I'm not going anywhere, and I'm not crying over Rodney Harrington. I don't care about him. I don't care if I never see him again. You don't seem to understand. I just don't care. Well, I guess that's been building up for some time. She's been hearing a lot of things, ugly things she doesn't want to hear. Why does Allison have to be hurt? You can't go on protecting her forever. She doesn't want that. She doesn't quite know what she does want, but why don't you help her to grow up? I'm saying maybe I should grow up too, huh? I understand Rossi was at the top of his class. Donald was in the middle. I liked your husband. Don't you find it a little painful, Laura? Staying in his office? You mean in Donald's office? Yes. Well, it isn't Donald's office anymore. And I'm much too busy for memories. Pity. Well, Dr. Morton. I was driving by. I thought I'd drop in. I'm glad you did. Excuse me, Doctor. 
thank you. I was uh, just looking at your diploma. One of the men who signed it and I interned together. Freddie Seidner. Oh, you interned with Dr. Seidner? Oh, yes, he was number five in our class. And number four? <sighs> no, I was third. <laughs> Surprised to find me buried in Peyton Place? Well, I wouldn't exactly call this a burial. It isn't. By the way, what do you think of Dr. Zeitner's latest paper? Which one? Last month's New York Review. Oh, yes. Well, I haven't had time to read it yet. But I'm sure it's terribly good. Sit down, please. And your Freddy's work always is. Tell me, Dr. Rossi, you like what you found here in Peyton Place? Well, that's rather a big question, don't you think? Well, the hospital. Well, the hospital, for its size, is equipped beautifully, I think, and runs very well. I'll take that as a personal compliment. As a chief of staff, I think you have every right to. Thank you. I was looking at some records at the hospital this morning. I didn't know that Betty Anderson, uh, Betty Harrington, had lost the baby. Yes, you weren't at the hospital that night. I advised Dr. Holstrom of the situation. Well, are you aware that the Harringtons don't know what's happened? Yes, Betty came in to see me yesterday. Well, have you made any effort to tell the Harringtons? Well, of course not. Betty's medical history is privileged communication. Privileged communication, doctor, is a term, not an explanation. Are you saying I owe you one? I'm saying that this is a small town. You've practiced in New York City. Medicine here has a different color. It's more personal. We all took the same oath. You approve of this marriage? I'm a physician, not a marriage counselor. My own personal feelings have nothing to do with the issue. I'm sorry, Dr. Austin. I was hoping that you'd be the one to do something about this. And since I won't? Well, I define privileged communication in a different way. I look at those people down there in the square, and I figure that I brought a good number of them into the world. For 30 years, they brought me all their aches and pains, not just the physical ones. When I see a girl like Betty manipulating a family like the Harry... What's your frame of reference, Doctor? Hippocrates or the local Dun and Bradstreet? Oh, I see you do have personal feelings. Yes, I do. But I don't let him interfere with my professional responsibilities. If you abuse this information in any way, I'll take you to the County Medical Society. Dr. Rossi? I know you're an officer of the Society, but I know also there's a committee on ethics. Oh, is that the way you formulate your ethics? By committee? I don't have time to debate philosophy with you, Doctor. I have a lot of patients out there. I hope you heard what I said. You're out of place here. You don't belong. It's evident to me, and soon will be to others, Dr. Rossi. Dr. Morton, I don't know if I'm in my place or out of it. I may not even know my place, but I am here. And being where you want to be is quite a privilege these days. It's a privilege I don't intend to give up. I hope we understand one another. Oh, yes, we do understand each other. Good day, Doctor. Good day, Doctor Morton. Preview from the continuing story of Peyton Place. But every time he looks at me or, or touches me, I, I feel like he's touching some other girl, a girl he loved last summer. I want to be that girl again. I uh, wanted to talk to you about the cottage. Well, it's a little late. Could have told you my son's wife was murdered there. What's there to know, Dr. Morton? Everyone believes you're going to have Rod's child. 